Natural regeneration is an option because it is an important component of what forest and landscape restoration entails. That is, forest and landscape restoration includes restorative activities such as tree planting for commercial or protective purposes, establishment of agroforestry systems, conservation of native habitat, as well as letting natural regeneration processes uh, undertake its path. And it works basically by removing uh, key stressors in uh, human modified habitat. If we have a natural uh, setting such as a mountain, if there's a landslide that removes the topsoil and the vegetation, natural regeneration over time will regain, reclaim that site. And the equivalent uh, applies to human modified systems. When you abandon agricultural activities or cattle raising activities and you are close to seed sources and uh, the land use has not been that intensive or, or, or that uh, uh, intense, so to speak, then natural regeneration operates on its own. Uh, it is often more effective than active approaches uh, when you have clear objectives. That is, natural regeneration is a, it's very cost effective because you don't need human labor. Uh, all you need is to leave the area that you're aiming at regenerate, uh, leave it to rest. Uh, so uh, human inputs and financial inputs are minimal. So when your management objectives call for those conditions, then that's when uh, it, it becomes the best option as opposed to say active tree planting. Uh, in many ways, but I will stress one that is being implemented now. C4 has worked a lot on, on discerning what are the biophysical as well as socioeconomic factors that determine natural regeneration to persist over time and to become successful in terms of recovering biodiversity and ecosystem services. With that framework in mind, C4 ECRAF has advanced the, uh, the, the, the arena of natural forest regeneration into the planning decision-making uh, dimension. And now uh, we're uh, building with collaborators in Brazil and Australia, uh, very sophisticated models that help users to predict where in space and time, natural regeneration is likely to uh, become an option for biodiversity conservation, provision of environmental services. One key consideration is to uh, refine the mapping uh, component of natural regeneration. In other words, we are uh, used to uh, forest cover maps that have either forest or, or no forest, or that can detect, for example, plantations, tree plantations. But in the case of natural regeneration, it's uh, technically sometimes difficult to uh, detect it in remote sensing, but the technology is advancing very rapidly. And, uh, one key issue to me is to really make uh, maps that uh, make natural regeneration visible uh, so that decision makers and land use planners can incorporate this land use type into uh, broader landscape restoration approaches, which so far has been uh, not uh, very prominent. And another uh, key issue that I believe it's important to highlight is the, the fact that in many cases, uh, different government organizations or institutions have a mandate over natural regeneration uh, because it, it is at the interface between agriculture and forestry. And we have uh, many cases in, in, in the tropics that uh, conflicting mandates undermine the persistence of these resources uh, over time.